Aloha. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to today's podcast. And this is The Healing Source. My name is Paul Fletcher, and this is season two, and we're on to episode number six. If you give me just a moment, I'm just going to let others know that we're going live. And good, that's done. And um, today we have a very special guest. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on the healing of grief and sadness. And most everybody in their life has experienced aspects of grief or sadness. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward, you know, someone that you care about uh, or, or possibly an animal has died. That's a, a very understandable reason for grief. And some, some people experience sadness under certain conditions as well. But there is a, a, actually a relatively large chunk of humanity that experience grief and sadness on a consistent basis. Um, and I want to share with you that it is different than a depression. Having worked with many people that have different uh, emotions, anxiety, depression, anger, grief, sadness, worry. There are many different ways that emotions can show themselves. And depression is more of a listlessness, I, no energy to move forward, just a, a lethargy. Whereas a grief or a sadness is a, more of a heaviness that uh, keeps our heart from feeling open. And we, we want to go do something. We have a desire to go do something. But this heaviness sometimes gets in the way of our ability to serve, our ability to, to be in the space or the place that we really would like to be in. And so when we talk about healing the emotion of grief and sadness, most people think about, okay, going, let's go see a psychologist or let's go see a counselor. And by all means, you should. They're, they're uh, very educated in these avenues. And for the most part, uh, I would say that they have a relatively good track record. <clears throat> In what I do with my line of work, working with Tao Healing, having trained with Dr. Master Jigong Shah for almost 15 years now, I learned some new and unique aspects of what it contributes to uh, some of the aspects of grief and sadness. And I touched on this in an earlier episode, season two, episode number two, when we talked a little bit about the five elements and their association with emotions. So if you missed that, make sure and go back and watch that. And also, if you're new, make sure you uh, like and subscribe to my podcast. And if you remember in those episodes, I spoke about the wood, the uh, fire, the earth, the metal, and the water elements. Well, the emotion of grief and sadness in traditional Chinese medicine has an association with what's known as the metal element. And there are connectivity to, for example, the lungs and the large intestine. There's connectivity to skin and skin health. There's connectivity as well to the imbalanced emotion of grief and sadness. Now, curiously enough, <clears throat> this kind of a condition uh, can be contributed, uh, can, can if you have a grief and a sadness, for example, from an external event, uh, somebody you love passing away, for example, then that can actually affect your lungs or can affect your digestion in the large intestine. Isn't that interesting? Myself, um, I, uh, up, up until I met my teacher, I had a significant amount of breathing issues, allergies my whole life, breathing issues, uh, some asthma, not heavy, but enough to where I had to have a breather occasionally. Um, and the sense of smell, which is associated with the metal element, was almost non-existent. You know, imagine going through life and not being able to smell perfume or smell, you know, uh, dog poop, for example. I mean, for some people, that would be like, great, I don't want to. But for me, when you miss smells your whole life and you smell something, even if it's not so pleasant, it's actually, you know, a blessing. So when you go without, just like when you have grief and sadness, you go without uh, you know, the, the, the positive energies that come with uh, normalized uh, emotions. And it can be very debilitating. So today we're going to be looking at how Tao healing can affect this kind of an emotion. We have a guest. Her name is Helen. And Helen uh, has, has been a student of Tao healing uh, for many years. 
and uh, she'll share with you some of her story. She's certainly had some success moving forward, and there is still some more growth that needs to occur in releasing this kind of negative information. <clears throat> and we'll share with you a little bit more about how this kind of negative information can come to your, your frequency and your vibration. Again, if you remember in some of the earlier episodes, I gave a great deal of detail on the nature of the soul, the nature of positive and negative information, and how it can reside in our field. Some of it comes from this lifetime, and some comes from other lifetimes. And what we want to be conscientious of is that even though you may have an emotion such as grief or sadness, the culprit might not necessarily be from a current event that you can uh, pigeonhole it onto. And so when people have a condition like this that it's difficult to move through and past, this is where Tao healing can be very, very effective and very beneficial in so many ways. So we're going to invite in Helen. I also want to say thank you and welcome to all those that have joined me live. We're streaming right now live on Facebook and YouTube, as well as on Twitter. And so I want to say thank you to all of you. You're welcome to come in and say hi in the chat. And now we're going to welcome Helen. We're going to listen to Helen's story about how grief and sadness has impacted her. And we'll give her a special uh, Tao healing using one of the transmissions I received. And so let us welcome Helen. Aloha. Welcome, Helen. Let me unmute you. There we go. Go ahead. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. I'm so grateful to be chosen as a demo. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. So um, give us a little backstory on what's been happening for you with this with this emotional imbalance. Um, it started before um, meeting Master Shaw, 2019, November. For five years, I was coughing, and I, I thought I had acid reflux. And it came to the point of, you know, throwing up. And I've always had these skin issues where I would have itchy skin. Itchy skin, or when I get mosquito bites, it just gets inflamed so much. Mm. And so before going into this beautiful soul journey and being a Tao Hands healer, I had a lot of negative information. It would I would be coughing nonstop for five years nocturnally, and I, I would lack so much sleep. And I would be tired, but then I would have energy to teach. Um, and it's hard when you're coughing so much because it's, it's a strain on the vocal cords. And I'm a music teacher for my kids. Um, so I'm very grateful to have had you know, many blessings, treasures, um, healing for myself. Um, but then recently, I got a cold and a flu in November. And since then, this cough has been lingering on and off. So it's, you know, I've been doing a lot of meditation with it, trying to clear some of the negative information. Every once in a while, I get better when the temperature's warmer, my lungs aren't as affected because I'm in Toronto. So the weather is damp and it's cold. And sometimes it's minus 25. And then sometimes it's, warmer but then you still got a cool breeze so you need to be careful with what you wear and at the same time i needed to be careful with what i eat but the issue is when it's the holidays you want to eat with your family and friends <laughs> so you know every once in a while the cough will come back so i'm very grateful to be chosen thank you yeah you're very welcome and so tell us a little bit about how the grief and sadness has impacted your life as well it's it's been hard like even now thinking about it i just want to cry because <clears throat> i want to be happy and i want to serve more but then i have this sadness that's in me it, and it just won't go away and i know i i i want to feel joy you know because i've been busy composing songs as well but the grief and sadness is affecting my lungs. It's affecting my motivation to want to sing, you know, to even compose songs. Or even, you know, I have some skin issues that won't go away, itchy skin every once in a while. Very sensitive skin. 
So it's really affected externally. And just also just, you know, feeling a lot of um, self-pity, I would say, you know, not wanting to be near people sometimes, kind of just want to be by, by, her, by myself and just meditate and try to figure out, you know, try to not get people sick because I'm coughing. So yes, it's been hard it's been very hard. Okay. And um, one more question. So when you uh, first came across the Tao healing, mm -hmm. uh, and if you if you were to give your series of imbalances, because a lot of what you're expressing is metal element imbalances, <clears throat> as described lungs, digestion, skin, um, grief, sadness, very related to the metal element. Now, um, if you look at that whole picture, prior to coming across the wisdom and teachings of Dr. and Master Shaw and the Tao Healing, uh, what number of discomfort would you give it, a holistic number? And then after X number of years uh, with these teachings, where would you say you're at now? I'd give it a number again. Wow. <laughs> I'd have to say I was probably at a zero or a one. In t oh, sorry, at a 10. At a 10 of just like being tired of coughing all the time. Okay. And not getting enough sleep, feeling tired, exhausted, but mm -hmm. always finding energy to go and teach the kids. Okay. And then um, after getting my Tao healing hands and getting some blessings and treasures to help my lungs, it went from like a 10 to like zero, <laughs> you know, one or zero. It was you know, really mir miracles for me. And I was like, wow, very okay. powerful, very powerful. Okay. And then um, throughout time, you have some fluctuations, comes ups and down and up and down. Okay. And um, what's your level of discomfort today with the breathing and the, and the grief and sadness? Well, I found myself not sleeping well last night and I was coughing a little. I think I'd say like <clears throat> six. Okay, yeah. great. So um, while I was, while you were chatting, the mess one of the messages I was shown in my spiritual third eye, that there's quite a few uh, blockages still um, behind your message center in your Y Jiao. This is one of the reasons why this is not able to clear. Um, and for those in the listening audiences unfamiliar with that, the Y Jiao is a space in the back of the body, um, basically, uh, it's it starts in the back of the of the head and goes down to the width of the shoulders, and it's in front of the spine, but behind the lungs, behind the heart, and it goes all the way down to the tailbone. So it's this rather large, narrow space through the whole back of the body, and chi moves through the uh, seven chakras and then down this back channel. It goes up and then back down, and up and back down. When the chi is moving, blood follows, and then uh, a person can heal much faster. And what I'm seeing in my third eye for um, Helen is there's a significant amount of blockage in, in the back half of the Y jaw. It's mm -hmm. not allowing the chi to move around the corner. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> um, there's also some messages I shared with Helen a little bit earlier, but probably not appropriate for this audience as to maybe some of the original root cause um, as uh, with that. But again, those that are listening for the first time, if you come across this podcast, you know, one of the things that I do is I do private readings and, can, can look into the your previous history and previous life in the Akashic records. And um, there are some specific things. And so when I do this blessing that I'm gonna do for Helen, I will ask silently for that to also be positively affected as appropriate. So all the blessings are always offered as appropriate. And if you are uh, watching this for the first time or listening on a podcast, if you'd like to receive a blessing like this, then just connect with me. You can follow the information that's in the uh, description area. So would you like to receive today, Helen? Yes, please. I'm so grateful. I'm going down. Thank you. Okay, very good. Let me check which level of blessing I can offer. Okay. I'm going to offer you um, a level two Kuan Yin crown chakra blessing. I asked for a higher, they said no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Yeah, because you know it's a gift. Is it? They don't know, and they can't can't do the big one. Um, but there is uh, there is higher level ones if needed. Okay, <clears throat> so. And you have third eye, so if you see anything, you can you can share at the end, okay? Mm -hmm. So this will be a two-minute blessing. Let me uh, get my alarm set here. One of the unique things, for again, for our listening audience about a crown chakra blessing is it is where I connect. I activate a transmission, and it, it, this connects to a beautiful Buddha known as Kuan Yin. I'm in this lineage, and this lineage power comes through comes through uh, the crown of the recipient and and floods their soul, their uh, frequency and vibration with uh, the most extraordinary uh, healing light and, uh, and more. And uh, it's just one of those extraordinary experiences when you have it, you know you just received an extraordinary experience. Okay, I got my alarm set, prepared to receive. Dao order, Guan Yin, level two, crown chakra blessing to our beloved Helen Mei Chan for bringing balance to metal element, specifically related to the breathing concerns, bringing balance to the imbalanced emotion of grief and sadness. Releasing any negative information blockages in the Y Jiao, behind the heart chakra, especially, and anything that can be released related to the vows that have been spoken of earlier, as appropriate. Crown chakra blessing, star. No. She's not done yet. She's still serving you. <clears throat> ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you're very blessed. <laughs> oh, so 
I'm so grateful. <laughs> yeah. That was huge. Um, so we requested quite a few things there. And did you have any experience? Did you notice it? There was a lot of um, heat and vibration that went behind the heart. Uh, I felt it in my body. And then I saw the light go towards the heart, behind the heart and inside the heart, and just growing, 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 expanding, and then going into my lungs and getting bigger, brighter, bigger, brighter, and then shooting right up to my head, or bigger, brighter, bigger, brighter. So this whole part, this whole top part is full of light, full of light. Yeah, upper gel, yeah. Yeah, so I'm very, very <laughs> grateful. Very grateful, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, have you received anything, um, light balls or holes for the, uh, for the first chakra area? I might have before when I was in one of the retreats okay. with Master Shaw. Well, the, one of the messages I'm hearing is to, uh, to, uh, you know, put on this animated field, um, and, and chant with the Y Jiao and the first chakra and help that, you know, put them on loop, activate any any of your transmissions that you have, focus on your first chakra, and listen to the white gel and listen to the first chakra. That's the animated field that came with the green book. Okay. Yes, I have that book. Um, I Yes, okay. Is the first house, is that connected to the lower Dantian as well? The first soul house is the first chakra. Uh, lower Dantian is above that, um, so they're, they're different areas. Okay. So think, you know, um, if you were to squeeze your anus uh, for like three seconds, right, right there, right above there, a fist size energy center is what you focus on. Okay. All right. Okay. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, you're very welcome. Because that will help the chi move. We've broken free the debris, and by focusing on that, then the chi will go. Woo, woo, woo. Think of the first soul house as the um, the engine. Uh, mm. uh, like, you know, when you see the Swiss watch and you always have the biggest gear and the other gears connect to it? Yes. Right? The first soul house is like the big gear. And and then it causes the other gears, the other chakras, uh, it moves the chi much better if it's working well. Yes. So now we're, we've, we've broken free the dam and the water's flowing back down, but now you need to, to have that first chakra pumping well and push it back up and yes. then get that chi flowing. And it should help you recover much faster. I feel lighter, too, and I feel... <clears throat> Hot. So I feel colored. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. More colors in the cheeks. You can see it actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're brighter. Congratulations. Thank you. So grateful. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Master Shaw. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what Terry said. Terry says, um, I saw three areas turn to light at the back side of Helen's heart chakra. There you go. Very similar. As to what you saw. Yes. And thank you, Terry, for your comment about um, about my services. And uh, I work with Terry um, closer here because he's in the Portland zone, but uh, he's also very talented as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, let I'm going to finish by sharing a few things, Helen, but I wanted to, to say thank you for coming in. And then um, in about two weeks, I'll be doing a wrap-up in which I call back those who can make it the three people that I bring in for testimony, or excuse me, for um, uh, uh, these Demo? demonstration services. Mm -hmm. I did a demonstration service last week, did one this week, and I'll do one more next week. I like to focus on anger. <clears throat> so if anybody out there has anger issues uh, and they would like to receive a blessing for that, then make sure you let me know. Uh, I did fear the week before, actually, mm -hmm. and then this week. Is that. So, um, but do let me know if that resonates with you, and then maybe you can be a demonstration person for me next week. <laughs> well, yeah, me, me, if I found the right person. <laughs> yes. Excuse me. And so, um, and then, so two weeks from now, the same time, if you can make it, I don't know if you can because you have your kids, mm -hmm. but I'm inviting everybody back in where they can. Uh, share their results so maybe we'll just get a, a two-minute video from you and play that and yeah that might work yeah, yeah. okay for sure. so thank you so much for thank coming you. in and, and then um i'm gonna I'll, 
put you off to the side for a moment, but we'll chat afterwards, okay? Thank you, thank you, most grateful, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so today, in, in today's podcast, we focused on Tao healing for the emotion of grief and sadness. And one of the unique things, as you noticed, is Helen said that she's had this uh, a good chunk of her life. And yet, uh, for her, uh, not only did she have the grief and sadness, it showed up in the form of skin and skin irritations and lung and lung-related issues. She's went from a 10 down to a 1 in terms of how the Tao healing has helped her since she started finding this modality in this form of healing. And yet, the areas impacted by the metal element imbalances uh, they tend to ebb and flow according to the seasons, as she shared, can be very difficult in the Toronto area where she's at. And so um, you had the opportunity today to see how a crown chakra blessing can be very fluid in what it offers. It, um, what I saw prior to even offering the blessing was where the blockages were in her body. And then two different people, her and another uh, person that's watching live, Terry, saw that it came to this entire back zone, helped clear blockages in the upper, what's called the upper jowl, or the upper space in the body. And, you know, humans, uh, we're all built the same. We have seven chakras, and we have chi flow. It flows up the seven ch chakras and then down the back. And this is the typical flow for all of us. But when that gets blocked, we can have lethargy, low energy, inability to heal. Uh, so many um, aspects of our life can be negatively impacted when our chi is not flowing. So when I ask for this very high level crown chakra blessing to affect our beloved uh, guest here, Helen, um, the, the heaven's generosity was so 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 big it came in and cleared out the negative information in the back of her channel started moving the chi i wouldn't be surprised if by tomorrow she'll be doing uh, much better and this is how fast these Tao healing transmissions can work so no matter when you come across this podcast live now or or one or two or three years down the road make sure that you contact me my website is wellspringoflight.com and you can contact me at paul at wellspringoflight.com uh, and, or excuse me, Paul at Wellspring of Light, no .com. And uh, I'm happy to connect with you. We can do a private consultation or whatever you might need. So I want to again thank Helen for coming in today. Next week, make sure you tune in at the same time. And we'll be doing another live podcast. We'll probably be focusing on the condition of anger. I've already had one person raise their hand going, me, 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 me. So that's wonderful. I'm sure she won't be the only person out there that has anger. Uh, but we can all learn from this wisdom. So until next time, have an awesome day. Bye-bye, everybody. And thank you to all of those who have come live uh, on this podcast. Bye-bye.